Hey guys, I have a geometry project to share with you today. We're reading this book called String, Straight Edge, and Shadow, and when we got to the section on divisions of a circle, we thought that we could recreate this project. So what you'll need is a compass and some watercolor paper. I'm using Fabriano 90 pound watercolor paper. It's nice and thick and it's going to hold up to watercoloring. So the first thing is you want to do your circle in the center of the page and you want to make sure that your compass doesn't change sizes as you're drawing your circle. And once you're done making your circle, you want to position your pointer on the outside of the circle and then you're going to draw an arc that intersects the circle. Then you want to place your pointer at that first intersection and draw another arc. And then you're going to continue doing this all the way around the circle. and you're going to be placing your pointer at each of those places where the arc um, intersects the circle. And in this way, you're going to end up with six somewhat petal-shaped divisions in a circle. So it looks really pretty when it's done. And now we want to watercolor it. So I'm using Distress inks in the color of the rainbow. So we have yellow and orange and red and purple and blue and green. And these distress inks can be found at dickblick.com or at craft stores. You'll also need a heat tool, an embossing pen, and some embossing powder. And so I'm using clear embossing powder here, and then later I use um, a white embossing powder. And so with the embossing pen, it's going to stay wet and a bit tacky longer than a normal pen, and this allows you to add some embossing powder to your paper, and it will stick to any place that you have this um, pen written on it. And so I'm going to add some of this embossing powder on it and want to make sure that it covers all of the pen. And then you just take off the excess and then you um, set it with a heat tool. And this will melt the embossing powder and provide a barrier um, at, so when we're watercoloring, the watercolors don't um, blend into the other sections. So this just takes a couple minutes to get the whole thing embossed. And you do want to use a heat tool and not a blow dryer for this project. So this is what it looks like when it's all embossed and it leaves kind of like a shiny look to it. And then I'm using a stiff bristled um, paintbrush. It's kind of angled so it'll be easy to get into all these different corners. And I'm starting with yellow and I'm going to be watercoloring this first section in yellow and then the two adjoining sections in yellow as well. And then when I move on to orange, I'm going to start in the next largest section with the orange, kind of at the fullest strength of the orange. It's not diluted. But then I'll add a little bit more water and dilute the orange to do each of those two adjoining sections. And so the part that had the yellow in it also has the orange. So it gives kind of a blended color. And now I want to work on the red. And again, I'm going to be doing the red at full strength in this first section. And then I'm going to add a little water to dilute it so that you get sort of like a red orange in that little petal section. So I'm going to continue doing this all the way around the circle so that each of those petal sections is a blended color of the two colors that are next to it. So it gives it a really beautiful rainbow effect. So this is a really pretty geometry project. So this is what it looks like when it's all finished. And now my fourth grader is going to do his project. So he's already drawn the lines and he's already embossed the um, petals and the circle. And he's going to be going about this the same way um, with the yellow first and then the blended color on that first petal and then the orange and the red and so on. And so my kids really enjoyed this and as soon as we were done all doing one set, they all wanted to go and do another one. And I hadn't intended to do this project as part of our geometry unit, but as we were reading the book, um, I realized that the kids weren't quite clear on this division of the circle. And to be honest, I didn't actually know about it either. And so now my seventh grader is going to do his project. And so when I was reading this section and it was talking about dividing the circle into six parts and, and then it further... And the further divisions ended up getting to 360 degrees, I thought we could go outside and do this project with some string and some chalk. And then I thought, well, why don't we go ahead and do this right now with some watercolors. We had our compass and our embossing powder and um, the watercolors, so we thought, well, well, we'll do it now first. 
and it ended up being a really beautiful project because we can't keep the chalk on the driveway for very long but this we can put in to their main lesson books and I really love the way that they turned out and so this is what my seventh graders looks like when it's all done and here is I think the first one that we did and then we've got all of them right here all in these beautiful rainbow colors so if you like this project and you want to see how we came about making our unit study for math click the right side of the screen and if you want to incorporate some math games into your curriculum click the left side of your screen and if you're on a mobile device you can check the description below for the links to those videos and as always check out pepperandpine.com okay guys thanks for watching